Jason, thank you so much for being here. I'm like such a huge fan. Aww, You've done like thank you. so many amazing things in your career, <clears throat> but you started so young. I was. And we do have something in common though, yeah, because yeah. you did start out in the pageant world, I correct? I was, yes. Was that like something that you wanted to be a part of? I mean, I was so young. I don't know if I can say that it was something I dreamed about, yeah. but it was something that... Did you was, enjoy? Yeah, I did actually. Yeah. You know, the one thing that was really nice about my parents and my grandmother was a very big influence in my life too, was that they always said the moment the enjoyment's not there anymore, this is done. You don't have to do it. It was never a have to. I never felt that way. Oh, that's um, good. And so... There were moments where it was hard and they were like, is this a decision of like, it's because it's hard or you really don't enjoy it anymore. And so, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I got to meet other girls mm -hmm. from other states and I got to travel and get dressed up. Like, what is there not to like about I, it? I don't know. That was, that's how I looked at it. It was so fun and to be on stage. it was very simple like that. I didn't yes. look at it in any other way, you know? I, I mean, we don't have to fit this in here because it's so funny, but you did the Cinderella pageants because I did the Cinderella pageants and they're like this whole different thing. Oh, yeah. I feel like for me, it was kind of a part of how I am where I, how I've gotten to where I am today. Do you feel like that was totally, your experience? I think in the very beginning, it, 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 it really taught me how to practice, you know, cause those, those mm -hmm. pageants, you all, you also had to have a talent. So yeah. I was dancing, you know, I, mm -hmm. I was a huge dancer back then and I danced my whole, pretty much my whole, you know, childhood up until, you know, teenage years. Um, so, you know, I have so many memories of like literally going into those hotel lobbies and practicing my yes. dance routine, like over and over and over in again. The hallway. Right? Yes. In the hallway and, and all that. But, um, but yeah, speaking in front of audiences, I mean, that's that was all done because of that. It wasn't because of school. That's for sure. I mean, it's one thing to do it in front of peers, but then to do it in front of peers and adults, that was a whole nother ballgame. That's one thing. I mean, I have my thoughts on pageants. I see the positive. And I see the, the ways that it totally. can be negative. But one of the big positives mm -hmm. is there's not many ways that a four, five, six, ten year old um, learns how to be able to have a conversation mm -hmm. with an adult mm -hmm. in, in that capacity on stage. Yeah, like that is sure. such a skill. Yeah, totally. And I definitely, I didn't start till I was like 15, mm -hmm. but I do think that helped me. I was a little bit shy. Yeah. I wasn't actually shy, but I, I would turn to yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And pageants really helped me helped be able you. to yeah. like, yeah, just learn to speak in front of people mm -hmm. and um, have opinions in some way. So yeah. I'm really thankful for it. Um, you grew up in LA. You I did. are from. I did in Southern California. I, okay. I, LA County for sure, but I actually grew up in Long Beach. So it's kind of a little removed from like LA, LA proper. Um, it has much more of a beach relaxed vibe, you know, my okay. town. So um, you can say LA because it's LA County, but it's actually Long Beach that I grew up. Oh, yeah, Long so. Beach is great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's a great little like, town. And my parents still live there, oh, you know? Oh, good. Yeah. Were you like a beach totally? Baby, oh, yes. Always there. Yeah. My yeah. older brother was always surfing. I was always on the beach. Yes. I, I still, still love the beach. So growing up here, did you have family or friends that were in the industry? Is mm -hmm. that how you kind of got into it? Yeah. Very, uh, a small amount. So my uncle would, was really, really the only person that had the connection into the business. He was sort he was a writer, um, and kind of an actor back in the day. He went to school, actually was a fraternity brother to Steven Spielberg. Oh, cool. So he sort of got the bug a little bit by going to school with him and, and, um, wanted to be an actor and then became a writer after that. So he was really my only connection. He had, a few people that were in the business and he was also a photographer. He actually turned to photography later and he was the one who took my very first pictures. Um, and that was what sent me into agencies to try and find an agent, which I ended up doing. And then I started modeling first, then doing commercials and then went into, you know, bigger stuff after that. So he was my, that stepping stone for sure. That knew like, okay, yeah. this is what mm -hmm. we need to do first mm -hmm. type of thing. Yeah. So was that where you still, I guess why I'm asking, like, <clears throat> you did the pageants. Were you modeling at that point, or is that where you're like, oh, I really like to do this? Yeah. I It overlapped a little bit, a little but bit? pageants definitely started. started, I want to say, a little bit before, but then modeling came in and commercials came in a little later, and then no more beauty pageants, and then I went right into, like, full acting, yeah. Did yeah. you enjoy modeling? I did. Yeah. I did. I enjoyed acting more though. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the creativity more. I enjoyed 
being around more people instead of just standing there and smiling. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. to me, that's how I looked at it as a kid. So I enjoyed the acting a lot more and and being able to be around a bigger group of people and be more creative. But I liked both. I mean, I still, you know, I still, I still enjoy both. Like you know, to be not in front that of model- the yeah, Not yeah. that modeling was anything that, you know, kept going for me, but, um, but I, I, I definitely enjoy both. I yeah. love the creativity of both. Uh, were you very extroverted as a kid? Like, would you say you were ever shy or no, no. I wasn't shy? No, 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 I was never shy. Even <laughs> my little brother was the shy one. I was not. Okay. Yeah. And my older brother wasn't either. And yeah. Never intimidated when they asked you to do something. I acting. mean, I'm sure I was at moments, right? I mean, I remember mm-hmm. getting nervous for an audition or, or things like that, but, um, But I never, I never, I don't remember ever like buckling to Mm -hmm. that, you know, and kind of crumbling to like the nerves getting so much that I couldn't keep going. Did you think you fully understand, like when you start young, do you fully understand maybe that, that there is pressure or did you immediately? I think I understood the pressure. Yeah. Because what. I mean, all the stuff that goes into it before you even get there, right? The studying of the lines and making sure also, like on the other side of it, making sure my homework was done and having to sit in traffic coming from Long Beach to L.A. to audition with nine billion other girls that are going in for it. So, yeah, I definitely could sense and feel that pressure. But I think the individual pressure that I had was pretty light because my mom was really good. My Both my parents were really good about you know, school comes first. These are just for fun. If you get them, great. If you don't, it's no big deal, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it was for a long, long time until I really made it sort of my career and what I was doing for a living, you know? Yeah. No, I think that's really special that your parents like didn't push you into it, but saw that you loved doing Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. and helped facilitate that. Yeah, very much. I, I think also being from Alabama, like I wanted to do that, those things, Mm -hmm. but I don't think my parents really that they didn't want me to but they didn't understand like how it even worked yeah. and we well, were in Alabama but probably because they didn't have anybody exactly like they, you know, my mom had her brother which is my uncle who sort of had that connection mm-hmm. so it was definitely probably easier than a lot of people um especially coming from you know Alabama yeah you know, I'm like right here in LA to a certain degree and so it's kind of around not that it's around you per se but it's sort of part of living here in Southern California, right? There's some, that's, it's so, there's so many great opportunities yeah, here. Yeah. That, that is one thing. I think there is always, and I could ask you about, about this, like there's this people like want to move from LA cause they don't want to raise their kids here or, <clears> but <throat> there are a lot of opportunities for your mm-hmm, children here, mm-hmm, especially if mm-hmm. they want to get into the in- industry. It, if yeah, they are for sure. like for your family, Yes, it was time commitment and mm-hmm. they were doing everything to help facilitate make your dreams come true. But they didn't have to like move across the country no, they did not, to do that. Which a lot of people do. Do you feel like they would have? I don't that's a good question. Because I wasn't their only child. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I had two brothers. I had a younger and an older. Um, that's a very good question. It's probably a question you would have to ask them, yeah. you know, yeah. and they might not even be able to answer that, you well, know, now they know, like, because they know, I mean, the thing about it is they, the sacrifice they already did, like mm-hmm. my mom would take me to all these auditions, which meant my dad coming home from work early and being with my brothers and many dinners weren't fed and because they were, you know, my mom was with me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so there was definitely sacrifices that were, that were made. It just wasn't as big as having to move. Did you ever feel like young, like uncomfortable or maybe it surprised you by the attention that people gave you because of mm-hmm. your beauty? <clears throat> you know, it's, it's interesting because I think yes, to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that has a lot to do with just doing beauty pageants, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you're going on stage and they use the word beauty pageant. Mm-hmm. But what I loved about the ones that I was doing is it wasn't just beauty, right? Yes. It was it was talent. And I was having to dance or sing or, you know, that's what a lot of people were doing. Um, but yes, that was definitely part of it, which is an odd thing to be judged on, yes. right? Um, <clears throat> and... But I really tried, and again, I credit my parents, to take it with a grain of salt, right? Because Mm -hmm. there's a lot of beautiful things. There's a lot of beautiful people. And really, beauty is in the eye of the beholder because what I think is beautiful may not be what you think is beautiful, right? And I try to teach my kids that, too, because we all have 
differences and what we see is pretty Mm -hmm. um, with landscape and architect and, you know, food. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. We all think what we like is 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 good for us. So I tried to really look at all of that with a really open mind and really not focus too much on that, because my mom used to always say too, the stuff on the outside changes and the Mm -hmm. stuff on the outside can go in a second. And those things aren't really truly that important. It comes from the inside, right? And she would instill that in me constantly, all the time, all the time, you know. Did you feel pressure because of this character that you played in Mm -hmm. your own life, like off screen? No, because I think I knew who I was. Yeah. I think the pressure I felt really didn't come till a little bit later when things like my body was changing and my face was changing and all those types of things. And all those things were happening in front of the camera, in front of people. And Mm -hmm. I think about kids nowadays that are doing this with social media and all that. And it's, I would never want, I would never wish that on anybody. Like it's, it's, it was hard enough then with just the teen magazines. Right. And then people like writing into websites or whatever. We didn't have social media constantly feeding, Mm -hmm. which even nowadays I've learned to really not pay too much attention to it because, um, it's just not healthy. It's just not, it's just, it's, it's good or bad. Yes. It's just not healthy. Right. It's not, it's not, it's not relevant to what I'm doing every day as a person, as a mother, as a wife, you know, those types of things. Right. Yeah, absolutely. What I'm wearing and how it looks is not relevant to me going home and trying to feed my two kids and help them with homework. You for know? sure. For sure. So. Everybody knows these, these iconic characters that you played on these huge TV shows. I do want to know, like, how, like, what was your first gig and how did you get into act? Like, was your first role that everyone knows you from no, your first? No, it wasn't. Okay. I had a couple small roles beforehand that okay. no one would ever know what they were. Like, they were small. Um, the very first, first roles were commercials. So I was doing commercials first, for sure. And I did, like, a, I, funny enough, did a Barbie commercial. Oh I know that's gosh. very strange. And it was funny. I just showed, we went and saw the movie with my kids. And one of the Barbies that I did the commercial for was in the beginning of the movie. And it was, like, very funny. It was very nostalgic for me. Um, but I started off in commercials okay. and, and, and like you said, modeling. Um, and then I did a couple small roles on TV shows that I don't even think went more than like a season or not even, maybe not even a season. Um, so I had a couple things under my belt, but that particular kid show on Saturday morning was my big break. I would say it was my biggest role first up. Yeah, for sure. Did you have any idea? No, how I had it was no idea. No. No, because I don't think most people do. I mean, mm-hmm. as an as an actor, and I look at this now, even when I get a job, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> and you never know how long it's going to last. It goes from a pilot to then possibly getting picked up for a full season or a half a season. You have no idea how long it's going to go for. So no one ever knows how the audience is going to react, if people are going to watch it, or people going to kind of actually respond to it. And so for us, you know... We knew it was different because we were the first live show on Saturday morning. Our competition. It was live? Well, no, not live, but okay, like in, the saying, sense, like, oh in the sense that it, we were up against, you know, animation. Okay. So yes. it was the first live show that literally was with actual people that wasn't animated. Wow. And so we knew that that was sort of different and we just didn't know how people were going to respond to it. That's the thing. Because most people always watch, everybody knew like Saturday mornings were cartoons, cartoons you know? Yeah. Um, and so we were the first ones that, you know, we were the first show that ever was not an animated TV show and people really responded to it. It was crazy. When did you know you were famous? When we went out on tour. So they, they took a few of us and it was mostly Mark Paul and I, but at certain cities we would be the whole cast and it was, but it was the first time that Mark Paul and I went and I want to say it was Florida possibly was the first one. And we rolled up to this mall because that's what people did is you went to a mall and you would do signings, you know, and this is the time when new kids on the block and, you know, all these other bands were doing this kind of stuff. You know, not many TV shows were doing this, but they had gotten us to go to quite a few cities. And I remember Florida, I think, being one of the first ones. And I remember going out there and the security guard said to Mark Paul and I, they said, you know, there's a lot of people out there. And I'm thinking, okay, a couple hundred people. And then when I went out there and the entire mall was completely blocked with kids, 
all the way. I couldn't even see the end. Um, that's when I knew like, oh, this is different than I thought. Yes. Like this is not just a few hundred people. This is thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And then it became another sort of interesting aspect when we would sit there and we would do these autographs, you know, with our pictures and they would come around and they would take pictures and, and then they'd want my pen or they, or they'd want like the cup of water that I was drinking. And I was like, what? I was like, first of all, that's disgusting. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I was like, that's really gross, you yeah. know, but <clears throat> it kind of moved into a different place where I'm like, I don't think I can go to a mall now by myself. <laughs> and how old were you? I was 16. I mean, 16. What, I think what is, I was just starting to drive. That's yeah. crazy to mm-hmm. think about. And especially mm-hmm. I think for you probably now, like having I have a 13 year old, 13 year old, yes, yes. it probably puts it also in this like oh, other complete, perspective for sure. So, and you said your parents were obviously like really supportive and mm-hmm. helpful. Like I want to ask like first, like how did they support you during that time? Mm-hmm. And just overall, what was it like being a teenage celebrity? I mean, you had your own, you, speaking of Barbie, you had your own doll. Like, <laughs> yes. p- and people wanted to, your yeah. leftover water bottles. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so how, like, just like paint a picture of what that was like. I mean, it was at times very surreal, but again, what I, what I respected in my parents and, and how they raised me was that, again, all of that could be taken away. Mm-hmm. None of that will last, which if you think about it. It doesn't. Yeah. Right. Um, And that the reason why I'm there is one, luck, and two, because I worked hard. And if any of those change, it can change the entire thing. I love that. Like, so you do believe in Absolutely. I do too. Absolutely. Because like I said, nine million other girls could have played that role. Mm -hmm. I was at the right place at the right time and had a really good audition. Like, Yeah. A lot of that is luck, for sure. I'm not saying all of it, but I'm saying a huge portion of that. And I still say that to this day. Yes. I mean, obviously, like, you have to be talented and there's something about you. And, Mm -hmm. like, I do believe that, like, certain things, like, are meant for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But... But yeah, you're a lucky, like, there, yes, lucky girl. Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm completely lucky. Me too. I know that. <laughs> I feel very blessed. And I know, and I know yeah. that. So having all that around me, I, I, I again kept saying, okay, you know, I got to still show up to work on time. I still got to know my lines. I got to, I want to do good grades because, you know, have good grades because if that doesn't, you know, if the if rest of this goes away, mm-hmm. like I got to, I got to go back, you know, and, and think of something else that I want to do, hopefully. You yeah. know? And I was always like, oh, I'll be a teacher. I love kids. And so I was like, you know, I got to do good in school. And so I always really tried. And I'm sure there were moments my mom would be like, you weren't always like yeah. that, you know, <laughs> but I really did try to take it all in perspective and knowing that all of it could go away and that I was extremely grateful for the opportunity and what was being given to me. Mm-hmm. But you also couldn't go to a mall. But I couldn't go yourself. to a mall, no. So what did you do as a, <laughs> a teenager? Well, weirdly enough, I was working a lot. And so you have to remember, I didn't. I stopped going to normal school, too. Okay, so I was going to ask you so, about school. Yeah, I okay. had to go to like a professional school, which uh, the one that I particularly went to had a lot of Olympians, actually, okay. because they would travel and train so much that they couldn't go to a normal school as well. So there was actors, musicians, people like that. And so I would get my books from this professional school, but then we would have onset teachers. And so my high school, except for that very first year of one semester that I went to school, um, was with Mario, Mark Paul, Elizabeth, Lark, Dustin. They were my classmates classmates because we were all in a room like this, sitting in these really uncomfortable chairs being taught by two older people, you know, that um, that's what they did for a living. They taught st- kids, you know, studio. It was studio school. Like one of those things, like, isn't it, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, when life imitates art. Yeah, right. That, it's that, totally that's true. That's totally what happened. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, the character you played as a, as a teenager, mm-hmm. you were the poster child for young women, I feel like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you feel... Um, Do you feel like you had to uphold some type of standard Mm -hmm. because of the way people, how you were portrayed? But I say that, but then also I feel like you did have like, it seemed like you had like a a good head on your shoulders about being like, that's my work life, but this is my personal life. But did it ever 
get a yeah, little hard. I mean, I definitely had moments of, um, and they were a little later in life because mm-hmm. I felt like my hormonally, my body was changing, face was changing, all of that more in my later teens. So I think that was probably the hardest time because mm-hmm. I felt like I was having, of course, to do that in front of everybody else instead of just high school and my family, mm-hmm. you know? And um, so I think I had my own pressure with that a little bit. I will say I'm very thankful that we're living in a time right now that was very different than when I grew up. And the sort of idea of what was perfect or the idea of what we should look like as girls is very different now. And I'm happy about that, yeah. especially raising a teenage girl, um, because we all are so different, right? Mm-hmm. Our bodies are different. We all change differently. Puberty starts differently for all of us. Um, but I don't think it was as accepted, you know, back then. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Barbie was huge back then, right? Yeah. And so, um, <clears throat> There was some sort of idea of what I was supposed to look like coming from a teen girl into a woman. And it didn't, in my mind, go exactly like that. You know, like that's what's so interesting. So, yeah, there was definite pressures for sure. I feel so much more settled at almost 50 than I than I did at 17, 18. You know, I for sure. I hear that a lot. Like, yeah, I'm close to being 30 and people like, oh, just wait. It's, it get, just gets better. And that makes me excited yeah. to hear. But just yeah. like knowing who you are and not being so entangled in what other people expect you to be yeah. or what you're supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. And in that same vein, you said that your daughter you now is 13 years mm-hmm. old. She's a teenager. And you were a role model for so many teenagers. Now, does your daughter have role models and in this generation and how do you, mm-hmm. how do you feel about mm-hmm. that? And like, how do you guide her? Because you've, of course, we've all lived our teenage years, but you had to live mm-hmm. them so publicly. So yeah. I feel like you have a lot of wisdom for her in that. <clears throat> it's funny. This is where I feel like we are a lot of like, a lot of like my daughter and I, um, cause I actually think she's a lot more like my husband generally, but as she's starting to grow and I'm watching her become, you know, a teenager and a young woman, um, <clears throat> she she loves certain things. Like she loves certain music and she loves Olivia Rodrigo and she loves, you know, like all these great singers and she mm-hmm. loves certain actors and stuff. But she really is funny. She's a very independent girl, which is kind of how I was. Mm-hmm. I had my ideas. I knew what I liked. And most people couldn't tell me other than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there was no, like, I, you know, just, just recently, like I was telling her, she got this, you know, she's just getting into a little bit of makeup <clears throat> and she bought this particular, um, blush that she was putting on. And I noticed that she was putting it on kind of high right yeah. up here. And I was like, Hey, sweetie, you got to just bring it down just a little bit. You don't want to put it too close to your eyes. And she looked at me and she goes, mom, this is how they're doing it now. <laughs> And I was like, you know, she's uh, kind of correct. They are getting it a little high. They're getting it a little it's high. Like right and, here. and here I am learning yeah. because truly, I think at this stage, I'm learning more from her mm-hmm. than she's learning from me. And I'm accepting that. Right. Yeah. And I was like, well, honey, there's basics to makeup applying. Yes. And I was like, I get the trends and all that kind of stuff. And she goes, no, mom, I'm being serious. It's really this high. And I was like, OK. Duly noted. (laughs) But what I loved about it is that, and granted, I'm her mother, and if someone else probably said something, she may have been a little more open, but because we're at that place now where a lot of things that I say, I'm not as cool as others. But I loved that she was very adamant about what she liked, what she wanted to do, and was like, this is how I'm doing it. And I was like, great. Great. You know, and I kind of was the same way when I was a teenager. I was pretty headstrong, but in a good way. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was respectful. She wasn't rude to me. You know, none of that. Not that it's like that all the time, but I'm just saying like we're teenage. But um, but I loved that she knew what she wanted. She had a, a, a pretty, you know, straightforward answer. Like, this is how I like it. This is what kind of kids are doing right now. And I'm going to do it like that. And so. She does. I'm not seeing her yet with like specific role models Mm -hmm. of wanting to like apply it. It's more of just, I think, 
trends that she's seeing. You know, she's not on social media. She's so. not on social media. No, we won't so allow So how it. does she even know what these trends are? From I think from classmates, okay. from friends. You're right with she's so young and protecting that innocence. And I wonder if, because you did start so young with millions of eyes mm-hmm, on you, mm-hmm. does that have something to do with how you maybe, really want maybe. To, to protect her Possibly. in some way? I mean, we were, we were pretty strict with even just TV and iPad and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's not that we never gave it to our kids and they still get it, but they have limited time on it. Your body changing in front of a lot mm-hmm. of different people. You've, you've talked about that a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and it's still changing. And it's it's always changing. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be 50. I'm still changing. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> was that more just from, and also people have to like realize, and I, when I was doing the research, like everything's so different now. Like, yes, it's TikTok, Instagram, everything, but like you would be probably going down to the grocery store and then just see like a, probably like a headline of something that somebody printed about you. Like how would yeah like, way back when I mean I don't that, have that, that I don't have that what? issue anymore no but like luckily, as a but... as a young girl like I could mm-hmm. not imagine mm-hmm. I remember sixth to seventh grade and then like I would say like fifteen to seventeen mm-hmm. those are like my two the, mm-hmm. the two times where it was like yeah I love that you just... skipped middle school because middle school sucked right yeah <laughs> I hated middle school but like those are the times where like things got weird yeah and you, it's like you feel like you have no control of your body yeah. And I think we know, like, in this industry, there's a, and I think things have changed a little bit, but like, there are people, not even women, sometimes men, pointing out things on your body. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did that, like, how have you healed from that? Or did you struggle with that? And yeah, how did you? I mean, I did. I definitely, like I said, I I think those years of like 17, 18, when I felt the biggest change Mm -hmm. from going from teen to like more woman sort of, you know, body was probably the hardest, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think it was maybe other people's ideas of what I should look like, but even myself, Mm -hmm. right? You know? And so, again, I'm I'm very happy to see that things are changing in that that aspect. You know, we have a a much more sort of self-love kind of way of looking at, you know, and and the fact that we have plus size models and we have, you know, like that was not, not a thing. That wasn't yeah. a thing back in my day. Mm-hmm. Gosh, I would have loved that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, how much healthier it would have been to see so many different types of people because that's real. Yeah. Right? Well, even like, I'm so glad that we had, there's plus size model now, models now, but I feel like just even now, you're seeing models that are a size six. Our size eight. Mm-hmm. When it like, wasn't. And that's what yeah. you grew up mm-hmm. in. And I did grow up in. And even like I go back to my very first commercial, the reason that Barbie commercial that I did, the reason why I didn't get to hold Barbie, which was like the star role, was because I was brunette. Because I wasn't blonde. Wow. So there was something to be said about that too, because a lot of I feel like a lot of those lead roles were always going to the blonde girl. The cheerleader always went to the mm-hmm. blonde girl, you know? Um, so not that that has anything. I mean, it's minimal it's compared like, to like, but it's still sort of the same in the sense where you're getting looked at differently just because of the color of your hair, your body shape, the color of your eyes, you know, whatever. How did you stay grounded in, in that when people are so subjective about don't, not just like your looks, but the different decisions you made, mm-hmm. like who was, who did you have that helped ground you, grounded you that you could talk to? My mom yeah. and my grandmother were probably the two most influential people in my life through all of that. Yeah. And, and still, I mean, my mother's still, um, the things I turn to her now are, are mostly about being a mom, you know, and just trying to balance it all. But she was very much, you know, that person who always said, don't, don't listen to, don't let that. That's just chatter. Mm -hmm. It's chatter. And you don't know where that chatter is really stemming from. Right. You Mm -hmm. you just never know where it's actually coming from. Um, whether it's coming from insecurity in that person or somebody who had its own, their own issues or someone who's just having a really bad day and wants to be mean. Right. There's people like that. And it's funny. I have this really sweet story the other day. My, my son was doing baseball camp. It was his first day of baseball camp. And he um, he came home and I was like, how was it? And it was a new one that he had never done before. But he was going with a couple of friends. So he wasn't totally like on his own. 
And he goes, well, there was somebody who was kind of not nice. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, kind of a bully mom. He was an older kid and he just was really mean to me. And he proceeded to kind of tell me some things that happened. And I looked at my husband because he is one who picked him up. And I said, did you happen to talk to the coach? And he goes, I did. I did. And then Holt and I, my son's Holt, um, had a nice chat about it saying, you know, like, if that is an issue for tomorrow, like, we should talk about it more. We'll go to the coach. And and then you really do need to stand up for yourself, you know, and make sure that you know that you tell him that it's not right. And so in the morning, as I was taking him the next morning, I said, how are you feeling? Are you nervous about this this kid? And he goes, no, I'm good. I know what I need to say, and I know I can go to the coach, but mom, I thought about it, and I'm going to give him another shot because I think maybe he was just nervous and having a bad day for the first day. Aw. Right? Yeah. And I was like, gosh, we're doing something right, you know? like That's big. It was so sweet, and I loved that. And it's like, again, you know how I talk about I, I feel like I'm learning more from my daughter. I, again, was literally so because I was ready to go, this is what you should say, make sure you stand up for yourself, which is things that you should hear. Mm -hmm. But I loved that he brought it back to the other side that, yes, some people just have bad days. I've I've learned that the way that people respond to you has nothing to do with that with you and everything to do with them. And that has helped me yep. so much Agreed. because. And by the way, this has been all week. He's totally friends with him and has been fine. <laughs> I love that. Which I think has a lot to do with my son and not yes. again to pat, you know, kind of toot his horn. And yes, I know he's my son, but, but I think his attitude going in and giving him a shot and saying, maybe he just was nervous on the first day, probably set him up to a different day on the second day with him. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Because he was going in with compassion mm-hmm. and empathy of mm-hmm. like some, something Com- that's a bit. Completely. Yeah. Totally. Good mom. Because that, that comes but from it was somewhere. Him, but yeah, no, yeah. It, it definitely, but that's something, again, it goes back to just, as I was a kid, my mom was always saying, you don't know the other side, mm-hmm. you know, why that's being said, or, you know, you just, you just don't know. Yeah. So don't listen to it because you don't know where it's coming from. And if it's really a place that's necessary for you, probably not. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Well, girl, teenage girls, young women are hard. And I definitely have, have struggled. I just moved, like I said, to yeah. Nashville. Girls and are I've, very hard. Girls are hard. Girls are hard. And I grew up with brothers. So yeah. I never I never knew the sister sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So maybe that was already hard for me. But yeah. I, it's I, like packs. Girls are Girls packs. are hard. Yeah. And when you're new, I'm new. And I think it's because it, we're, emo- we're more emotional too, yeah. right? So, and I was saying this to my daughter too, because she's just started middle school last year. Yeah. So she has one more year of middle school. I said, it will get better. Mm-hmm. I said, girls are hard right now because they're going through so much, which mostly a lot of the boys don't go through until a little bit later. Mm-hmm. I was like, but it's really hard right now with girls. I go, it will get better. One more year, I promise you. And then high school is going to be better. It will be better. For sure. Yeah. But I will say, I still think even as an adult, sometimes women are in packs. And when you, I, I just think of some of my friends who have nurses changing different units mm-hmm. or um, me moving to a new town, trying mm-hmm. to get in, mm-hmm. find women yes. friends. Yes. It's kind of difficult to be the new girl. Yeah. Yeah. And I re- like research yeah. and saw that you, you had that experience. Had <laughs> and yeah, <clears throat> I think a lot of women do at mm-hmm. different stages, whether that's going mm-hmm. into middle school right. or starting or a new, a new job. job. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give somebody that's in that position of like, I'm really trying to, you know, find this good work environment, trying to connect with these other women. Mm-hmm. But it feels really hard right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would you say to them? Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Yeah. yeah. It'll turn around. Yeah. And if, if it's meant to be, though. Right? Mm. Maybe that's not, it may not, not be. Meant to be the group you're supposed to be yeah. in. Exactly. And, and I, it's funny that you say, because I know what you're talking about yeah. in a sense, but, um, you know, I was patient. Mm-hmm. Things did turn around. Um, a lot to do with me and some other people that brought, I think, these particular girls attention to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it's funny how it sort of just repeats itself anyways. Right. Yeah. And that, yeah, it's being patient, but also realizing, okay, to let let go. And it's just not, it's not, 
There's it's not where you're supposed your to life. be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're just in, you're in this position for a season yeah. that yeah. is maybe not to make friends, but to, uh-huh. you know, learn something learn about. Learn something, which yeah. I did yeah. so much. And, you know, there's, there's, there's certain people that can be forever friends, mm-hmm. but then there's certain people that are friends for the moment, for right? The season. Yeah. And that's important. You and learn. that's okay. Yeah. And that's okay. I just, I, I just I give a lot of grace to those types of things. You for have sure. To. Yeah. But I think that's to. just like, as women, you like grow and mm-hmm. finding your friendships, finding yeah. the, I don't know. It just like really hearing your story with that being new somewhere. I'm like, I'm kind of feeling parts of this. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. how it's hard to, it to is make, hard. find a new yeah, group. Yeah, for sure. In, in your jobs and well, different places. I might have a couple people in Nashville for you. I might oh, I would love that. I yeah. would love that. Some pretty cool girls. Yeah. I mean, we could go on and on about your career as an actress and you've done so many things, but I feel like you're like in this and you're still acting, but well, nobody's acting right now. Well, <laughs> nobody's you know, doing crap right now. I'm but. hoping maybe when this comes out, maybe you're, <laughs> act- but you have kind of like taking your career and really a side career, a side career. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's cooking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How have you always been a homemaker? Yes. Have you always enjoyed cooking? I have. Ever since I was a little girl, I really was kind of like, I would peer around the kitchen and watch my mother and my grandmother and my aunt cooking and having a blast doing it. And mm-hmm. it was really that initial sort of idea of, I just want to hang out with them because it looks like what they're doing is really fun. And then as I got older, really understanding kind of like what a lot of people say about music, right? It evokes a lot of emotion. And to me, food does that as well. It brings people together. It evokes emotion. It evokes memories. You know, every time I have my mom's cream cheese pie, it takes me back to my childhood. And a lot of people can say that about food, right? Mm -hmm. And so I've always had a love and a connection to food. And I've always loved to cook, whether it's for friends or you know, trying to snag a man, right? You know, when I was dating and and oh, was or, that your secret? I was a good cook, yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah. I can't I'm not say that's lie, my... right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we all have our thing, right? It doesn't mine. have to be cooking, but what, <laughs> cooking was definitely one of mine. Um, and now just you know being able to do that for my family. Um, so yes, I've had a love since very very little, very little. I wish I could relate because I am struggling. I do. I do find those moments where I love cooking with other people. Like yeah. I love when my boyfriend and I are cooking mm-hmm. in the kitchen That's or fun. with my yeah. mom. For me, I get, I feel a lot of pressure. Yeah. But I also am not that comfortable in yeah, the kitchen. Yeah, I was going to say, then, that, then that's different. It is different because so, I have a lot of friends that are like that. Yeah. Like you know? I, I'm like recipe book. I have to follow this exactly. Where yeah. then um, one of my friends is staying with me right now in Nashville and she cooked for us one night. She, I was like, oh, how, mu- how much did you put in that? She's like, ah, I don't know. I just um, I just taste it yeah. and see what's right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean? <laughs> I just am I'm not mm-hmm. there yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I need your yeah. cookbook for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but you started out um, with your own uh, cooking show, I right? Did. Yeah, Before I kinda, you did I kind of did it backwards. I was going to say, you did it like in I a... I kind of did it backwards. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just because I was already on TV mm-hmm. maybe. And I, but I... You know, I had a cooking show on on Food Network and Cooking Channel for a few years, which was super fun. And and um, and so people were like, well, you know how to cook. And it was, you know, shouldn't you have a cookbook? And I'm like, oh, I guess I should. I mean, I guess that's what you do. Right. Yeah. And so it was really that first book was very much kind of a, you know, a big book of family recipes that I had been either doing with my own family or they were recipes that I grew up with that I might have modernized a little bit from my mom or my grandmother. And so um, that was kind of the basis of the first book. Um, this book comes from a very different place. Um, it comes from a couple different ideas, one being um, really wanting to teach my kids about food waste. And Understanding that we're living in a time that is quite fragile in our mm-hmm. planet and that 40% of food gets wasted from farm to table, which is pretty astonishing and kind of crazy to kind of wrap your head around. Mm-hmm. Um, so really wanting to teach my kids how impactful that is. And um, and also kind of going back to that, you know, and the reason why I kind of made this book sort of a love letter to my childhood and it's very shot in a like late seventies, early eighties kind of vibe. Um, my mom was like doing that way back when. So 
But her reasoning was that they didn't have a lot of money. We didn't, Mm. we grew up with not a lot of money. And my dad was working two jobs to allow my mom to stay home and raise us three kids. So she was always trying to stretch the food to last. So our roasted chicken on Monday was then made into enchiladas on Tuesday. You know what I mean? So I didn't realize it until I started kind of coming up with this idea that, oh my gosh, I was raised like that. Like my mom was doing that, you know, in her own way. Yeah. And so I really wanted to just kind of create my next book based on that because we were spending so much time at home with the pandemic and and people weren't going to the grocery store. And so we were kind of forced to almost really stretch out our mm-hmm. food. Um, but I think there's something really important to that. We shouldn't be wasting that much. You know, it's one of the biggest contributors to global warming and climate change and living in California when we're dealing with droughts like we are, like it's firsthand for me. Yeah. Um, and so I really wanted to create a book that was easy for people to try to open their minds a little bit to the stuff that's already in their fridge or their pantry. You know, my kids would always come and be like, mom, this bag of chips is done. And I'd be like, no, it's not. And because they were all broken, they wouldn't eat them. But Mm -hmm. I have an idea for that. I can show you what to do with that leftover crunched up pretzels. You know what I mean? Or, you know, people buying like buttermilk for a recipe and then never using the rest of it because what do you use buttermilk for? Not many things. Well, I'm going to show you what you can do with it so you're not wasting it. you know, another little funny tidbit was that my husband hates leftovers. I don't like leftovers. I'm feeling okay, really so called then you're out. Like, so. <laughs> you're like my husband. But what's funny to me, there's certain things that I think are great leftover. Like leftover pizza to me is awesome. Okay. I love cold pizza. Me too. Thanksgiving to me is better the second and third day. Okay. I can actually get on board with those. I'm just saying like casserole, like right. normal. My mom, we made chicken, right. chicken and casserole. And this book it. is not so much about the Mexican food you had the night before, but it's about the leftover rice that you made to go with another dinner. Mm. Let me show you something else you can make with that rice. You know, um, I may, I always make lots of risotto, risotto. My kids love risotto and I always have leftovers. So I'm going to show you how you can make arancini out of it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's stuff like that, um, that it's not just leftovers of, from a restaurant the night before. I haven't if that thought makes of, sense. Yeah. yeah. I th- that sounds inter- interesting to me. Yeah. I think of leftovers like, oh no, you're just heating up the same dish yeah. and I no. just get tired of eating no, the same thing. No, it's reinventing, which is why it's, it's really looking at the things that are already in your fridge or the vegetables that are just starting to go soft. Let me show you what to do with those before because you're not going to eat the carrot that's soft, but I can show you something else you can do with it, you know? Yeah. I think it's such a great concept and I'm so excited. Um, What is, I'm going to ask you one more question. Okay. What is the one dish out of that, this new cookbook that you say everybody's got to try? That's hard. It's like picking a favorite child. child. (laughs) I know. I know. Um, I'm going to go easy. Okay. Because I do believe it's one that everybody can do and that everybody has a leftover. And that's, that's what pizza. I need. It's pizza. Oh, pizza. Okay. So it's a breakfast pizza, pizza sandwich. Okay. And so we always mm. have leftover pizza no matter what. And so it's, and it's super easy to do. Um, and my kids love it. My husband loves it. So that's definitely one, but there's so many great ones. Like there's a lot of them, of course, in here that I that I do all the time. So, um, you know, most of them have been recipes that I've been doing. Some of them were developed for the book, but most of them have been recipes I've been doing for a while. So, well, I can't wait to try them. Here we go again is available now. Tiffany, thank you so much for coming on. It was so nice to meet you. It was so nice to meet you too. I, I'm just a big fan and I just, I love how you just reinvented yourself in a way, continue doing the thing that you've always been passionate about, but also bringing your kids into to what you're doing. I think that's really special. Thank so. you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck in Nashville. Thank you. Thank you.